James, if you practices in here, have you seen any kind of reason for se for separation for the tight end? I'm sorry, I wasn't even listening. It's all good. <laughs> uh, tight ends, have you seen any separation you know, with that group over there? Yeah, um, I think Holland's, you know, I think Holland's really doing some nice things. Um, um, he's really had a really good off season, had a good spring. He's built on it. Um, you know, obviously not ready to make any announcements or things like that. You know, Bowers is Bowers is uh, you know, doing some good things as well. Dalton is, is doing some nice things. But I would say right now, you know, Holland probably has been the most consistent. Been very pleased with his blocking and things like that. Um, he's always been kind of a guy who could make plays in the passing game, but he's really doing a good job for us, you know, when it comes to the run game and blocking and things like that. So I've been pleased with him and his maturity. You know, it's been it's been good. James, you guys who I'm sorry. How is Michael Mennett looking at center? Really good. You know, really good. You know, I, I, it's interesting because, you know, I look at this whole recruiting process and the way this thing has gone and how much attention these guys get. It's amazing. Like, Mennett gets here and, you know, and he was a highly recruited guy. I get that. But it's like because he didn't, like, start, you know, game two of his freshman year, it's almost been like, you know, is everything okay with Michael Mennett? I mean, you know, Michael Mennett is doing extremely well. And I'm not talking to you, I just in general. Um, you know, he's doing extremely well. And, um, you know, right now, I think he's, you know, I think he's really helping us by the way he's playing at center with a lot of confidence. He's got tremendous athleticism. Um, I actually think Connor moving to guard plays to his strengths a little bit as well. Obviously, that's still a battle going on. But right now, you know, I think we're getting pretty comfortable with, with men at center. And Connor, who's a little bit bigger uh, guy at guard for us, and Menet's maybe got a little bit more quickness. Uh, so I think that's a nice little combination right now, and uh, he's doing really well. But I just, you know, I, my, my initial statement is I just think this recruiting process, I think sometimes creates false expectations for the fans and for our players and for their parents and for everybody and their community sometimes. Uh, but Michael Mennett's doing great. We've been pleased with him all along. Um, and now he's in a place where he's really, you know, battling to have a significant role for us. So James, very, very pleased with him. I'm sorry for interrupting sorry. you. Your guys who arrived in the summer, uh, the two summer semesters, how are they adjusting now that they're in camp? And is there anybody who's kind of maybe standing out from that group? Yeah, I think this freshman class in general um, is is really doing well and really advanced. They it doesn't seem too big for them. So like a guy I think right now that there's a lot of buzz in our in our you know in our program about right now is Jahan Dotson. Um, very natural, fluid guy. The game comes easy to him. Nothing seems too big for him. He never gets rattled. Got consistent hands. Um, makes it it's everything's effortless for him. He's gotta get bigger and stronger and those types of things. But I just think in general, this freshman class, um, they're much more they're much more aggressive. Um, they're much more competitive, um, and that's not a knock on other classes. My point is, most times these freshman classes have to come in and they got to feel it out first. And these guys are coming in, and I think you know we probably had a little bit more guys at mid-semester. We probably had a little bit more guys in summer one. So all those things factor into it. But right now, it's a large percentage of them that are competing at a pretty high level. Um, you know, and I know I know they've been very respectful of the older guys in the program. I know the older guys have taken them under their wing. Our guys do a really good job here culturally in terms of helping the young guys out. Um, so, you know, I've been I've been very pleased with the freshman class, their mentality, their approach, uh, body types, athleticism. I've been, I've been very impressed. Juwan had 22 of his 54 catches over the final four games, I think, last year. What do you think it was that helped him come on strong like that at the end of the season? And what does the ceiling look like for him this year? Yeah, Ideally, I, I, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, you know, as you know, it's not like we go into games, jog off the field, please. It's not like we go into games targeting guys. Um, it's all based on, you know, what the defense. Jog off, go back, go back, go back. You three wideouts, go back, DeAndre, go back and jog off the field. Um, that what the hell is that talking about? Kind of part of the course. Juwan. Oh, Juwan. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, it's not like we went in targeting anything. You know, we're trying to get him the ball. It's just literally how things kind of play out. Um, you know, 
Now, it's not like I think, uh, I haven't gone back and studied it, but I don't think it was like he had a bunch of drops early on and was more consistent. I think it's just kind of how the game plan played out and with Mike Kosicki and with, uh, you know, and with um, Hamilton and all those guys. It could be where the defenses were keen on those guys a little bit more, which created more opportunities for Juwan. Um, you know, he's, he's really kind of approached us the right way for a long time. I think this has a chance to be a big year for him just because of his maturity and his trust and his chemistry you know, with Trace. Uh, but overall, you know, I've been, I've been really pleased. Jesse Lucchetto was considered a leader of that class coming in. How have you seen his personality make an impact in that locker room and carry over? Yeah, I think, I think, you know, I think Jesse left home. Um, I want to say at like 13 or 14 or something crazy like that to go from Canada you know, to, to uh, obviously, you know, boarding school. You know, and I remember talking to his mom during the recruiting process, and, you know, she was not for it. And at 13 or 14 years old, or however it was, he kind of put his foot down and said, I'm going to chase my dream in America. I mean, think about that. Think about your kids, 13, 14 years old, leaving the country to go somewhere else, you know, chase their dreams, pretty amazing. And so my point to you is he's a mature kid in general, and then you leave home at that age and somewhat on your own, you know, I think that creates some of that as well. And then with him being able to graduate early, it just magnified all of it. So I just think in general, he's a pretty mature, heady kid. Um, and then his life experience as well as graduating early has kind of helped. So you know, he's doing a really nice job for us. Uh, he's really changed his body. If, if you guys look at him, he's much more lean right now. Um, uh, he's quicker. He's really, his, his functional movements are really, really good. So you know, please with him. James, how does the installation process compare to last year? And are there challenges that you have this year that maybe you didn't have just because personnel is different? I, I think it's similar. I think obviously when you got a, a veteran quarterback, it all starts there, and you kind of build your installation off of that. Um, you know, our offense, we've got a lot of guys coming back that have played a lot of football for us, so I think that helps too. Um, I thought, you know, our offensive staff, obviously with Ricky Ronnie, I thought this spring had a really good feel for what they wanted to do and then kind of grind it all off season to kind of map it out um, and you know I think I think we're in a really good place we eliminated some things we tweaked some things like we would always do and then defensively as you know we got a bunch of kind of uh, youth and inexperience and I don't really see our installation changed a whole lot um, you know actually I would say the opposite we looked I think I think on normal downs we, we blitzed overall or something like 56 percent and we typically in, in camp kind of the way we install is base and then one man pressures, excuse me, and then line stunts and then one man pressures. Same thing on offense with motions and shifts. And, and Brent's point was we need to get blitzes in a little bit earlier because it's just too big of a part of what we do. So, you know, we sit down myself and Ricky Ronnie and Brent and Phil and kind of map out um, our installation schedule in camp and there's give and take and there's conversations there. Um, you know, I was, a, I was a coordinator years ago and worked with a really good defensive coordinator and he didn't run a traditional front. And here I am trying to install an offense and you're not getting base looks on day one. You know, that creates some challenges. So it's kind of how I was brought up in the profession and also just kind of what I felt like over the years is the best from a teaching perspective. How are you supposed to evaluate these guys, especially the young guys, if they, if they don't have a chance to run the base plays versus base looks early on and then build it? James, who's look good at linebacker? I'm sorry, go ahead. Gotcha. Sorry, it's, it's, it's early in camp here, but what is the, the most pleasant surprise so far in this training camp for you? Well, I, you know, culture is a big word to me, and I know it's a big word for a lot of coaches and a lot of programs, but I think it's probably thrown around a little bit too much. Um, but then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the same thing right now. Um, I, I just see... Our guys, you know, I, I showed a bunch of clips today, you know, before practice of championship habits. Guys, you know, guys doing little things that are going to pay big dividends for us down the road. Uh, and I just see more of it. You know, in the past, it would be Deshaun Hamilton as a redshirt senior who's really kind of figured it all out, and he was doing it. Um, you know, you'd have veteran players, Jason Cabin, and so on and so forth, where now I see multiple players at position, you know, showing how to practice and how to compete. You know, we, we talk about championship habits in football and in life, and I just see a lot of that. You know, little things like the locker room. The locker room has been a battle, you know, for four years to get the locker room clean the way we want it cleaned. Um, you know, sweeping the sheds, you know, 
Um, and, and it hasn't been that way. It hasn't been that way. And this, this year it's been really good. The quarterbacks are taking leadership with that. The linebackers are taking leadership with that. And then each position is taking leadership with that. So that's really good. So I just believe all that discipline um, that we've shown in other areas is going to help us. It's going to help us on Saturdays. I'm hoping grades will come out here pretty soon. I'm hoping our grades are as, as strong as they have been since we've been here over the summer term. I love that quote by Saquon Barkley the other day. What's the difference between the Giants training camp and Penn State? He said the only difference is I was taking Spanish three, you know. And and you know to me that's a great quote because our guys are taking you know really challenging courses in the summer, and it's the only place I've ever been where most of camp our guys are practicing and going to school almost the entirety of camp. So um, it's a little bit different than most places I've been. James, what, who's looked good at linebacker and secondly? What can Jake Zembeck offer to the program going forward? Yeah, I think you know Jan is is really doing some nice things. I think there's I think there's a lot of comfort with him. Um, I would say the same thing with Cam Brown. Uh, he's had a really good off season and, and camp so far. Um, and then there's kind of just a bunch of guys. Um, you know, as a young guy, you know, uh, Micah, you would never know that he's never played linebacker for before he can find the ball. He's got a natural ability. I think I've told you guys this before. He'd go run through the wrong gap and backdoor the play, but he just he can find the ball. Now we got to get him more consistent in terms of being in the right gap and on the right leverage and those types of things. But he can naturally find the ball. Jesse Lucchetta is doing some doing some really good things. Um, you know, I, I hate doing this because then I leave so, someone out. Um, but there's a bunch of guys. Manny has looked really really good. You know, he's obviously our most experienced and older veteran guys. Um, Ellis is doing some really good things. There's a bunch of them. Um, so you know, I, I hate to do this because I leave somebody out and then I hurt someone's feelings, but I don't, I don't really mean that. It's just hard to you know, memorize them all. But I do think we, uh, I do think we've got a bunch of guys that are contributing and doing some really good things at that position. I felt like defensive tackle, as you guys know, and kicker and the linebacker, they're probably our biggest areas for questions. Uh, D tackle right now, I feel like we're further ahead than I thought we would be at this point right now. Um, I kind of feel better about our linebacker situation. And these four freshman kickers are doing phenomenal right now. So, um, you know, they were the biggest question marks going in and we're starting to kind of answer. How do you feel hey, about your safety position? Good. You know, Nick Scott is kind of the alpha male at that position and, and doing some, you know, doing some really nice things, not only from a production standpoint, but also from a leadership standpoint. And then there's about four guys that are all battling for that next spot, you know. Um, you know, Garrett obviously has been there, you know, for a while. Sutherland, um, I think Lamont's really made a move in this off season. You know, when he first went to safety, he had never done it before, so it was kind of new, and he's really kind of made a move. Uh, Chris, am I missing someone? I'm sorry. Am I missing someone, guys? In the four. Sutherland. I, I met you. Sutherland. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, he asked about Jake. Yeah, Jake. Oh, yeah, that was, was that a long time question. coming, and how do you manage? A kid, you talk about expectations of a community when a kid that age, his career's over. Yeah, you know, um, you know, it, I, I don't know if people completely understand and embrace how hard it is to walk away from the game. And probably football more so than any other sport. Because if you're a soccer player, you can play some level of soccer the rest of your life. Or a basketball player. When you walk away from football, uh, you're, 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 you're walking away. Um, so that, that's a very emotional uh, decision. Um, yeah, there's all types of factors, not with Jake, with everybody. I mean, you got pressure within the community. They go home and people are asking them, you know, um, kind of like with Menon, you know, whether it's injuries or not or whatever, you go home and people ask, well, when are you going to play? And, you know, family members and they're already putting enough pressure on themselves and the media and, and all of it. It's just, it's a lot. You know, so typically these guys will take a while before they're going to make that decision, um, you know, and, and trying to give every chance they can to come back from it, whether it's surgeries or whether it's rehab or whether it's just time or whatever it is. So but typically with these decisions, they're very rarely ever made quickly. You know, it's it's a long drawn out process, um, you know, but, you know, you know, the guys that we've had it with have been awesome, you know, and uh, I think Jake, you know, with his role, especially the position he plays and the leadership that just comes with that position in general, you know, I think he's going to do a fantastic job. Um, you know, you never know. This this may spring into maybe coaching for him in the future. You know, we'll see. But, um, 
you know. I, it's, it's, it's hard because when it's medical stuff, there's things that I'd like to say to answer the question a little bit more complete, but I also want to be sensitive you know, to the specifics of the medical and some of the laws that go with that as well, and also just Jake's privacy, if that makes sense. But, um, but Jake's going to have a huge impact in our program, and the guys that since we've been here that have done that, you know, have been have been awesome. Have been awesome. Thank you, coach. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you.